So, the Battlefield 1 CTE has officially been announced after murmuring since the launch of the game. And with it, DICE have brought us some information as to what we can expect in the future of Battlefield 1 as well. So, let's get into this. For those who aren't aware, CTE stands for Community Test Environment. And it's something that DICE launched in the life cycle of Battlefield 4 to try and test new features with a large group of people playing. If you used to play older PC games, you can kind of think of it as similar to what beta patches used to function as. Except here, you get a whole different version of the game to use instead of the main one that you normally play on. Now, DICE will be using the CTE to test new features and to patch out bugs before they release updates to the main version of the game. And with the help of more players, hopefully they'll be able to release better and more polished updates moving forward. The CTE was a huge part of the Battlefield 4 game cycle, and it even helped produce new content, like the night maps, Dragon Valley's remaster, and the community map called Operation Outbreak. It helped DICE tone down the grenade spam in the game, they came up with a solution to head glitching, and it even helped them rebalance suppression. This is the kind of stuff that you can most likely expect from the Battlefield 1 CTE. Everyone going in there, testing out new features and changes to the game to see whether they work properly. So how do you sign up and get access then? Well, right now DICE aren't opening it up fully, but they will do very soon. They're handing out special access codes to select members of the community. I guess they want to make sure that access and entry into the CTE is working first before they open the floodgates. Now, it will be launching on PC first, as it did with Battlefield 4, and then hopefully the Xbox One and the PS4 will be coming in the near future. And the last barrier to entry, you need to be a Battlefield 1 Premium member as well, just as you did with Battlefield 4. Now once the gates are open publicly and you don't need an access code to get into the CTE, I'll of course let you know with another video, and then you can all sign up and get yourselves in there. Now I mentioned at the start of the video that DICE have given us a little hint as to what is first on the agenda to be tested. And as I'm sure you can tell from the title of the video, DICE are bringing back ribbons to Battlefield. Now, if you're somebody who really doesn't like the current medal system in the game and doesn't think it provides enough progression and longevity, well then rejoice, because it seems that DICE finally did hear our cries. Ali Hassoun, who is a live producer at DICE, confirmed the following on the CTE subreddit. You will now be able to collect ribbons as you play. There are 20 different ribbons to collect, and each time you get a ribbon, you also receive 500 XP. The ribbons are designed to promote good team play and playing the objective. If you have suggestions for other ribbons you'd like us to add, we're always listening. This seems like a good step in the right direction. I hope we're able to obtain the ribbons more than once, so that we can continue to see the team play aspects that we're achieving in our games, but I guess we'll be able to confirm exactly how they work when some more people gain access to the CTE. It will be tested there, and once it's ready, it'll go into the final game, hopefully. Class ranks are being increased in Battlefield 1 as well. As you know, at the moment, each class can be leveled up to a maximum of 10. Dice are increasing that to 50. If you can reach the new highest rank, then you'll receive a new flare on the kill card in the dead player's kill cam. So they'll know that you've hit the max rank for the class you just killed them with. And whether this increase means that new weapons will be integrated into climbing the class ranks further, I'm not 100% sure. But again, we will surely know more once this stuff goes live on the CTE for us to test. Some more codices are being added to Battlefield 1. Those are the little achievements that you can get in the multiplayer for getting 10 kills with a weapon, and in single player you get some for, you know, completing the different stages. They're being called Elite Codices, and there are eight of them for certain primary weapons in the game. And to unlock them, you need to obtain 500 more kills 
with those weapons. You'll get to view the codices in the Battlefield 1 menus, and for unlocking them, you'll get 25,000 XP as well. This is basically Battlefield 4's weapon mastery system, where you needed to get 500 kills with a weapon to get the mastery dog tag. So it's nice to see that initiative back here in Battlefield 1, and some new stuff for us to achieve, a little bit more progression added to the game. And another high level feature is the map vote option, that will be tested in the CTE soon as well. This feature will be added to the victory or defeat screen at the end of the round that you're currently playing, and two maps will be chosen from the pool of maps that's available on the server, and players will get to vote on which one they want to play. Whichever wins becomes the next map. Now the feature won't be available on all servers, but it will be showing up in the CTE very soon. And because I read the entire thread on Reddit about the update going into the CTE, I picked out a few more highlights that I think are worthy of mention that will be making it into Battlefield 1 at some point. So first of all, rented servers, those are the ones the community can buy and then you can play on in Battlefield 1, they will now show up above standard official servers in the server browser, so more visibility for a server that you've bought. The Selbslader 1906, that's the Medic level 10 weapon, has had its accuracy buffed along with a reduction in its recoil and spread as well, making it an even more deadly weapon when used correctly. This next one I think will make a lot of people happy, the Automatico Trench, the Hellregal Factory, the Masson Storm, the Bar Storm and the MG15 Storm have all had their horizontal recoil increased by 14.3% and that's to make them more challenging to use than they currently are. I think we can all be in agreement that the Automatico Trench is just a little bit too good when it comes to hip fire. Improvements have been made to the Cavalry Sabre kills in that should you actually be killed by the sword, the horse and the rider won't look like they're miles away from you and actually a normal distance so it's conceivable that they could have killed you. The gas grenade duration has been reduced from 22 down to 15 seconds, hallelujah it's a start, and new server settings have been added for rented servers as well. Admins can now toggle the behemoths on and off if they want to, and they can turn on a setting so that spawning in is only available on a squad leader. Both of those will need to be changed by the admin, they're not default values. All the information in this video, please remember, is not currently live in Battlefield 1, but it will be tested very soon in the CTE. As I said before, as soon as public sign up is available for the CTE, I'll let you guys know, because the more people that test out this new stuff, the better DICE's patches will be for the main game. If the CTE is handled the same way as it was in Battlefield 4, we might even get some new content in there before it's released for the final game, but for now, nothing has been confirmed beyond what's in the Reddit changelog and on the official Battlefield 1 website. I've left links to those down in the description if you want to go and check them out yourself. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you're as excited as I am about these upcoming changes and the chance to test them out as well. Let me know what you think down below in the comments section, and while you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.